and women. And I say men in the parlance of the Bible. Men and women. And we are honorable men and women. And we ought to carry, Honorable Speaker, I beg you to protect me from the Honorable Betty. <laughs> I say, Honorable Speaker, that we are seen and viewed to be honorable men and women. And it is perceived, or it should be, that we are among the very best in our society because our people elected us as among the best of the people in their constituencies. And I'm sure even the people of Juja elected the Honorable Koimburi, believing he was one of the best among us, the people of Juja. And therefore, he has been very magnanimous to apologize. And the book of 1 John 1, 9, The book, the good book, tells us that if we confess our sins, he, meaning God, is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I think, Honorable Order. Speaker, I have listened to what uh, members across the aisle have said that if you seek forgiveness, you shall be forgiven. And I must commend the Honorable Koimbori for seeking forgiveness for his unrighteous ways of things he said about members that were not there. But the book also tells us, if you confess. Yeah. And I, when I listened to the Honorable Koimbori, I heard him say that he said things that he now knows are untrue, and he knew they were untrue even at the time he said. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, the fact that the Bible tells us if we confess, we shall be forgiven by the Almighty God, and we are all followers of Christ and followers of the Almighty God, Allah, even for those of us who are from the Muslim Islamic faith. Honorable Speaker, if you can forgive me from these ones who are saying we are not God. Of course, I know we are not God. But we all believe in God. And I want to believe in this house, Honorable Speaker, we are men and women of great faith. Men and women who are Christians and others who are very good Muslims, who believe in the Almighty God. And therefore, being followers of Christ like myself, I have absolutely no problem as a person in forgiving the Honorable Koimbori for his inequities. <laughs> However, to protect the institution of Parliament, Honorable Speaker, to protect the dignity of this House, to protect the dignity of innocent members of Parliament who are seen as sellouts for either 2 million shillings or 2,000 shillings or whatever the amount was, Honorable Speaker, then I would beg that we handle this matter with a little bit more care so that tomorrow I do not stand up and accuse a member of parliament who votes this way or the other of having received bribes, knowing what I am saying is untrue. More worrying, Honorable Speaker, and I would urge you, Honorable Speaker, to ask the Honorable Koimbori to stand in his place. Because if you seek forgiveness, please do so with clean hands. When the Honorable Koimbori wrote that letter last week, Honorable Speaker, that letter was delivered to your office in the evening. A copy was delivered to my office, and a copy, I think, to the leader of minority because they were copied. And I would have wanted to hear the Honorable Koimbori confirm if indeed what he says he was the author of this letter. This letter was delivered by a staff member in his office, whom he knows, and I don't want to name him because he's not here, but the Honorable Koimbori knows his staff member who delivered that letter. The letter was stamped in my office. 
Unfortunately, the person who stamped it received put one stamp upside down on the copy that he came with that he was to return with. And he asked that it be stamped properly, facing up, and it was stamped. That is the letter that circulated on social media last week. The Honorable George Koimbori, on his social media platform, specifically on his Facebook page, stamped the same letter fake and said it is fake news. I therefore have been more convinced to believe in the seeking of forgiveness by Honorable Koimbori if he also came out clearly to tell the people of Kenya whether the dishonesty exhibited in, on his Facebook page is not the same dishonesty he now seeks to exhibit on the floor of this house pretending to seek forgiveness that he does not mean. But if the Honorable Koimbori can confirm to me and to this house that even his actions on Facebook page that day were informed by other factors other than the truth, Honorable Speaker, and confirm he was the author of this letter, then I am more than willing myself to forgive the Honorable Koimbori. Failure to do that, Honorable Speaker, and that's why I say there must be a balance between our faith and the dignity and honor and respect of this House, Honorable Speaker. Failure to do that, then I would strongly recommend, because Honorable Koimbori cannot be in a church and allege one thing, come and draft a letter seeking forgiveness. Then the same evening, post on social media that the letter is fake, a week after, appear on the floor of this House now saying a different thing. Which George Koimbori do we believe? Which George Koimbori are we seen here? Which Koimbori, George Koimbori is here? Is it the George Koimbori who lies in church? Is it the George Koimbori who stamps letters fake on social media? Or is it the meek looking George Koimbori who is seated here now seeking forgiveness? If this George Koimbori is seated here seeking forgiveness, Honorable Speaker, is the same Koimbori, I forgive him. If the George Koimbori of lying in church and later denying and reasserting the lie, then I will not forgive that George Koimbori. But the George Koimbori who is here, if he wants to be honorable, if he wants to dignify this house, he must come out clean, confess one to the lie he said in church, confess to the lie he sold on social media. If he comes out clean, I am more than willing to forgive the Honorable George Koimbori and ask the Almighty God to also forgive him for having lied in church. And uh, the Honorable George Koimbori is my very good friend, Honorable Speaker. In fact, the Honorable George Koimbori, in his first election as a member of parliament, he will tell you he had serious problems when he was seeking election first as a member of parliament. The Honorable George Koimbori was elected never having set foot in a single political rally in Juja constituency. He campaigned when he was uh, hiding, in hiding. And he knows the only place he could come to when he was in hiding was to my house for me to facilitate him, to be able to facilitate his campaign. And these are facts of life, Honorable Speaker. And the Honorable Koimbori knows I have invited him to my house, facilitated his campaign. And that is why, as a friend, I, I choose to forgive him if he confesses the dishonesty. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I will ask, Thank you. before you conclude, the Honorable George Koimbori to rise in his place and clarify the matter of the letters, because that is pertinent for me and for many members.